Welcome to my channel, Predicting the Future. Smash the like button and subscribe to my channel for future videos. From the last Markov chain video, we defined what is a Markov chain. It's a memoryless process. Given a history of previous states, the only, it only remembers what or cares what the current state is. We also introduced Chapman Kolmogorov equations, which said to calculate the n step probability, we sum up the probability going over an intermediate state. Today, we want to further investigate the various properties of the states in a Markov chain. States of a Markov chain can be classified by its characteristics. If we say state J is accessible from state I, if for some n, the probability of reaching state J after n transitions is greater than zero. State I and state J are said to communicate if the probability of entering state J from state I is positive after certain n steps and the probability of entering state I from state J is also positive after some other m steps. Any state communicates with itself because given current state is I, the probability of a current state is I is just one. If a state I communicates with state J, state J communicates with state K, then state I communicates with state K. And because of that, communication partitions the state space into separate classes. A Markov chain is said to be irreducible if all states belong to one class. A state J is called absorbing state if once entered can never leave, like this Markov matrix. Once the process enters, once the process enters state 1, it will never be able to leave. Okay, suppose the process is in state i, will the process return back to state i for sure? Or there is a chance that it will never return back to state i? Let's see an example for illustration. Think of a drunk man standing outside a bar, walking one step at a time, either left or right, with certain probabilities. Will he eventually return back to the origin? or there is a chance that he will never return. If he can always return back to its origin, we say it's a recurrent chain. Otherwise, it's a transient chain. But with certain probability of going left with P and right with 1 minus P, how do we know it's a recurrent or transient chain? Let's find out. Define a sequence of identity random variables. The nth identity value is 1 if xn equals to j, otherwise its value is 0. Define pi as the probability measure given initial state is i, that is, the conditional probability of xn equal to j given x0 equal to i. Define tjm be the number of transitions needed for the process to re-enter state j exactly m times. The value of tjm is the value n of the n steps of the Markov chain and Markov process when it first revisits state j exactly m times. It's, let's say the Markov process revisits state j in x10 step, that is x10 equal to j, then tjm is 10. The if means, if x11 not equal to j, x12 not equal to j, we still take 10, not 11, not 12. Even though, the sum of the identity sequence of x1 plus x2 to x12 is also 10. We are taking the infimum of the possible outcomes satisfying the condition. Given current state is i, the probability that the process visits state j for the first time in finitely many steps is tj less than infinity. We denote it as rho ij. Here the m in tjm equals to 1, meaning the first time the process visits state j. By using the Bayes chain rule and Markov memoryless property, 
we can we can derive the probability of the process visiting state j for m times in finitely many steps, which is the probability of transition from state i to state j for the first time multiplies the probability of revisiting state j for m for m minus one times. Now let's officially define what is a recurrent state and what is a transient state. We say we say state j is recurrent if starting from state j, it will always return to state j in finitely many steps. That is rho j j equal to one. If a state j is recurrent, then starting in state j, the process will re-enter state j infinitely often. We will prove it. In the next couple of minutes, we say state J is transient if the probability of returning back to state J is less than one. That is, there is a chance one minus rho J J that the process will never return to state J. Let's define a random variable that counts the total number of times the process revisits state J. Let n j be such random variable. n j is the sum of the indicator variables of each transition step x n, where x n equals to j. Let's calculate the expected value of n j in two different methods. First method, expected of n j is the sum of n times the probability, probability where n j equals to n. So this is n. Times a probably n j equal to n, equal to n, we write it as a sum of from with m equal to one to n. That's the same of n times p j n j equal to n. We change the summation by the Fubini theorem. So we change the series, and n com comes to outer sum, m goes to inner sum, and that becomes this form, and and with the inner sum. It's just a probability of p i n j greater than or equal to m, and that is the sum of m equal to one to infinity one minus p i n j less than or equal to m minus one. What it means means that it, when the number of times the process re-enters state j is less than or equal to m minus one. That is that if the the the, the m step is The process would never comes back. That is the number of steps taken for for re-entering state J equals to infinity. So we re re rewrite this form, and it becomes the sum of one m equal to one to infinity p i t j m less than infinity, and that is the sum of p i j times p j j to the power m minus one, and That is equal to p i j divided by one minus p j uh, rho i j divided by one minus rho j j. The second approach, so expected by n j is just the expectation of the sum of indicated random variables. Take the random summation out of the expectation, and that becomes the sum of n from one to infinity p. X n probably p x n equal to j given x zero equal to i. That is the sum of the Markov matrix to the power n taking the i j term. So we get two representations of the expected value of n j. That is expected value of the total number of times the process revisits state j is equal to rho j rho i j divided by one minus rho j j. And also equals to the sum of the Markov matrix P to the power n taken the i j entry. We label this equation as equation two. If we let i be the same of j, then the expected value of n j is equal to rho j j divided by one minus rho j j. Equivalently. Sum of the Markov matrix P to the power n taken J J entry. We label this equation as equation three.
Now let's see how we can determine when a state is recurring when it is transient. If a process would always return back to its original state, that is rho jj equal to 1, then the average number of returns is infinite, which can be seen from the equation 3. When rho jj is 1, rho jj over 1 minus rho jj is infinity. If a process is not always sure that it will return to its origin, that is the rho jj is less than 1, then, then there is a chance that the probability will escape and never revisits, revisits its origin. Therefore, the average number of returns is finite. That concludes the following theorem. State J is recurrent if and only if the expected value of the total number of returns is infinite, or sum of the power of Markov matrix JJ entry is finite. State J is transient if and only if the expected value of total number of returns is finite, or sum of the power of the Markov matrix JJ entry is finite. There's a more intuitive way of proving this theorem. Given the probability that the process ever re-enters state j as rho jj, then the probability of now returning is 1 minus rho jj. This is a geometric random variable. The probability of this process to have an n number of returns is equal to rho jj to the power n times 1 minus rho jj. The expected value of this geometric random variable is rho jj divided by 1 minus rho jj. Same as what we just proved in the first approach in equation 3. Now you might have a question. If state i is recurrent and state i communicates with state j, is state j recurrent? If state i is transient and state i communicates with state j, is state j transient as well? The answer is yes. This can be easily proved. We know if i and j communicate, therefore there is a number k and number s such that pij to the power k is positive, pji to the power s is positive. Since state i is transient, then the sum of PII to the power k plus n plus s is finite. But this is greater than or equal to PIJ to the power k times PJI to the power s times the sum of PJJ to the power n. Therefore, sum of PJJ to the power n is finite as well. Same logic with different directions applies for recurrence for, for the recurrence statement. Sum of pjj to the power n is infinite is equivalent to xn equals to j for infinitely many times with probability 1. Sum of pjj to the power n is finite is equivalent to xn equals to j for infinitely many times with probability 0. This is a direct result from the Borel Cantelli theorem which we will not be proving right now but in the future series of videos when we talk about measures and functional analysis. Smash the like button and subscribe to my channel for future videos. Thank you.